Over the past few months at Fendleton School, we've been working on some changes to our reporting system um, to change the way that we report to parents uh, about the progress of their children in school. Um, back in March, I um, ran a couple of sessions in the afternoon and evening for parents to uh, explain what, what it was that we were doing, what we were changing and, and why we were changing it, um, and also get some feedback and ideas on, on what parents thought about that. Um, this presentation is a, a sort of online version of that, um, those two sessions. Okay, so what do we, um, what have we been doing in the past? How have we reported to parents um, up to now? Um, well, in term one, we have a meet the teacher evening, which is an opportunity to, um, as the name suggests, meet the teacher um, and, and find out how their program runs and, and how the classroom operates. Um, the student led, sorry, student learning conferences um, take place in term two, um, and they're an opportunity to to meet the teacher um, to talk specifically about um, the parents. Uh, child and, and how they're progressing at school, how they're getting on, uh, what their goals are and what their, their next steps um, are for their learning. Uh, Student-led conferences take place in Term 3 um, and that's uh, led by the student um, with their parents to, to go through again uh, what progress they've made, what, what their goals are and uh, how they're doing in school. And then finally at the end of the year um, in Term 4, um, generally in the last week of term we send home a, a written report um, which sets out progress throughout the year. So what's the problem with uh, with this? Um, well, it's the end of year report really that um, we're wanting to change. Um, the end of year report does not have a direct impact on learning. Um, it's uh, too late in the year. Um, it's more of a review, not an ongoing next steps document. Um, it summarises where the children have um, got through the year, but it's very much um, the end of the year uh, and they're moving on to a different class and to different teachers um, and therefore this document isn't having a, a direct impact back onto their learning in school. So what would we like to put in its place? Um, well we'd like a working document that the children use, understand and can explain. Uh, a report which is focused on the where next not just the where from. Um, one that shows clearly where children are and um, where they're operating in relation to expectations for their age. Um, and a reporting system based on formative assessment. Um, that's assessment which uh, feeds back into learning and uh, isn't just a line in the sand and a, um, a level, um, but it covers the curriculum and, and, and drives their learning. Really. So what will they look like? Um, there'll be a red clear file, one for each student, um, and within that there's a contents page um, setting out what's in there, uh, a brief explanation of the thinking behind the report, um, and then uh, the actual uh, assessment data and goals, um, the children's uh, own thoughts and ideas as well as comments from the teachers uh, and spaces for parents to, to make comments as well. Um, it's going to run on a two-year cycle so that the um, reports come back at the end of each year um, for the next teacher to be able to use and uh, work through and see where the children have come from. Hopefully there'll be a, a clear format um, and it'll certainly be consistent across the school, um, although there will be variations from year to year. Um, they will show clearly the level the children, is, uh, children are working on um, and what their next steps are. And it will be an ongoing record showing progress uh, over time. When will parents see the reports? Um, we're going to do this on a three cycle, a cycle of three. Um, the first one being student learning conferences, which take place on the 26th and 28th of May. Um, the week before the conferences, we'll be sending the learning reports home for the first time so the parents can see them and, and talk to their children about them and, and um, digest the information in there before they come to meet the teacher so that the time spent with the teacher is uh, talking about the learning and the next steps rather than um, how to read the document. Um, the second cycle will end with the student-led conference, uh, which is Wednesday the 19th and Thursday the 20th of August this year. Um, and that's the child's opportunity to go through the learning report and show their parents um, how they've progressed through cycle two. And then cycle three will be the final one, and that's when we send the learning reports home uh, on the 20th of November. Um, and then we're going to ask for the reports back by the 27th of November so that we can pass them through to the teacher for the following year um, to keep the cycle going. Um, how does this fit in with the digital world? Um, obviously, the school um, makes heavy use of digital technology. Um, all our classes now have websites, um, generally blogs, or there are some wikis as well. Um, and this is a, a live view of learning. That's the, the idea behind them, is that it's um, constantly updated by the children's uh, thoughts, opinions, um, feelings, and reflections on, on, on their learning. And an opportunity for parents 
um, to give feedback um, to their children in a digital format. Um, and that feedback and interaction is essential to learning. Um, children can share their learning, comment on others' learning, um, and, and share it with their parents and, and wider family. Um, parents can comment to their children about their learning, and this is happening more and more across the school. Um, so the digital um, technology and digital world that we live in um, runs in parallel to the learning report. Um, and we, we're always exploring ways of um, enhancing this and improving this and, and making it a more useful tool for the children and also for the parents. Okay, um, the curriculum levels um, are shown throughout the reports to show where the children are sitting in terms of the, uh, the curriculum. Um, as you can see from this, uh, this diagram, uh, it shows that those levels are very spread out. That um, It's not as simple as saying if a child's in year one, there'll be a level one, year two, there'll be level two, etc., etc. But there's a big, there's a large spread. So a, a child uh, may well be uh, at level one from year one all the way through to the end of year three, start of year four, and that's not unusual. Um, to have that large spread, um, whereas you may have some new ch children in year six who, who are on level four, but you also have children in year six who are on level two, and this, there's a very wide range of, uh, of levels and they're very broad bands. Um, this is an example of a, a maths sheet that will go into the learning report, it's an ICANN sheet, um, and it's where the um, teachers and the children together indicate what the children are working on at the moment. Um, now the indications are done through highlighting um, and through dating. So a highlight will indicate that the child is working on that particular attribute um, or skill. Uh, and the date signifies that we're reasonably confident that they've um, understood and mastered that particular technique. Um, although it's important to say that um, children do uh, sometimes uh, forget things and, and they may be able to show one skill one week and, and it's not quite there the following week. Um, but the date indicates that um, we're, we're pretty confident that they can do it most of the time. Um, so this sheet uh, is for stage four and stage five of the maths curriculum. And the stages for maths um, overlap the levels, but they're, they're broken down into, into smaller chunks um, to make it easier to see where the next steps are. So the, the advantage of this document is that it not only shows what they're working on at the moment, but the, the other things that they need to be working on to move through, um, through the stages of the maths curriculum. Um, this is a, an example of the reading um, sheet, a reading sheet, uh, where you can see the highlighting, and again, it's the same idea. Um, the highlighting indicates where the children are working at the moment, and if there was a date on there as well, then that would indicate that we were pretty happy that they were able to do that um, particular skill. There's also a space in here for the children to indicate what they're currently focused on, what their learning is um, currently looking at, and, and how they're going to do that. Uh, this is a, another ICANN sheet, this is a spelling sheet um, and this breaks down this, the spelling uh, rules that the children are working on at the moment and gives an indication of what sort of year um, of schooling you'd expect the children to be working on those um, uh, learning outcomes. Uh, and these uh, are year one uh, keyword and uh, alphabet assessments um, which uh, you kind of need, need to see on the on a full full size sheet of A4 to, to understand. Um, and here's an example of a, a key competency sheet um, which shows uh, two stars and a wish, some of the couple of the things that the children are, are doing really well um, and something that they'd like to be able to get better on and, and how they would do it. This is a uh, from the junior one of the junior learning reports. Um, as I said earlier there, there is a um, variation between year groups on how the um, learning reports look and some of the um, contents of them, although the, the, hopefully the look and feel is pretty consistent throughout the school. So that's the idea behind the reports and that's what we're hoping to achieve. Um, once you see your own child's report, obviously it will um, hopefully be a little bit clearer um, and then um, you'll have some questions about it and um, the teachers will be able to answer most of those during the um, student learning conferences. Um, but we also want to get your feedback on, on what you think about the new reports. Um, how they work for you, um, is there enough information in there, is there too much information in there, um, is the information clear, is there too much uh, education jargon in there, teacher talk, um, does it make sense to you and give you what you need and, and also um, what the children need to, to move on to the next steps. Um, so to help you with that we've um, uh, on the web page uh, on the school website um, called Learning Reports, um, we've got a frequently asked questions section which uh, uh, we've taken questions from parents um, 
as, as around the learning reports and we've, we've tried to answer those on this page. Um, we set up a feedback group of parents who um, are going to come meet with me um, after they've seen the learning reports for the first time to, to give their thoughts and feedback um, to help us to, to continually improve the, the new system. And there's an online feedback form, uh, also on the learning reports page of the website, um, which lets you pop some feedback in to say um, any ideas, that, uh, improvements you think we could make, or, or um, any positives about the new system. Um, and we'll also send home a, a paper copy of that for parents um, to fill in. Okay, so that's um, learning reports, and uh, hopefully they're going to be very successful. Um, uh, but they will be a, an ongoing uh, development throughout the year. Um, they're not a finished um, article yet. And, uh, They'll be constantly changing and growing and improving. Um, so we look forward to um, receiving your feedback and uh, hopefully um, they will work for you and for your children. Okay, thank you.